Wetzel. Cross court. Buckets! Welcome back to the Wildcats Network for this postseason wrap-up. Now joined by Greater Latrobe head coach Brad Wetzel. Coach, you started off 3-2 and two in section play, then you lost final five games. You said at the beginning of the season this was the best section from top to bottom, and you saw it firsthand. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I just, uh, and, I, and I remember that conversation, and I said, you know, the the problem is there's going to be a good team on the outside looking in. We just want to do all we can not to be that team, and unfortunately we were. Now, you lost to some good teams in the final stretch of your season. All of them are really good in your section. What was it a combination of in those final five games that, you know, guys had chances, but at the end the result just wasn't the way that you wanted it? Yeah, you know, no excuses. I think uh, there's a myriad of reasons. You know, one game it was this, another game it was that, but the reality was that, you know, we had it in our hands and uh, it could have been, you know, an offensive law. It could have been foul trouble. It could have been depth one night. It could have been foul shooting one night, a combination of all three. Like it was, it was, we just didn't quite get over, over that hump. And, and that was a shame because I think this team was good enough to, to, to go make some noise in the playoffs. And hopefully the lesson was learned. Well, despite some of the injuries that you had, obviously Alex Tash, Jack Doranovich out for the year, it gave way for some players to play Wildcat basketball with some varsity minutes, Brady Perhovic, Kyle McNeil, Ian DeServe, they really stepped up. Oh, there's no question. I think the opportunity was there for, for those guys you mentioned and others. I think the opportunity was seized by some, and others uh, did not take advantage of, the, of that opportunity. And, and that, that was disheartening to some degree. But uh, the guys you mentioned, I think, for the most part, really answered the call. You know, and the question is, can they now take it the next step? Uh, it's going to be required you know, as their role changes on next year's team. And I know that you guys missed the playoffs this year, but your junior class, I think, took another step as far as learning how to win and producing at a high level. And that's key because they're going to be the keys next year. Uh, there's no question about it, Rich. And, and I've, uh, uh, I've been convinced this a long time. When it's, when it's not the situation, you try and talk yourself out of it. But the reality is seniors play different especially ones who are motivated and have uh, the, the, the right agenda are very difficult to beat. And I think this year, um, you know, Franklin Regional was an example of that. Their, their senior leadership was very calm, very, it had a, lot of, a sense of resolve and they, they, their mission was clear and it was held by all of them. So they played a certain way. So I really think, you know, next year, uh, our juniors need to, need to learn the lesson and then, and then go take what they feel they deserve. And you talk about senior laden teams. There's no denying the impact that Quadarius and Jaton had on this team this year, but maybe more so off the court than on the court. What was their impact like for their teammates and for their coaches? Yeah, I can't say enough good things about either one of them. I thought, uh, you know, everybody has their struggles as, as you come up through a program. You know, I think they addressed those from a basketball standpoint. As far as young men, I mean, uh, they, they grew up tremendously. I think none more than Q. I think Q had, had the longest distance to cover. And uh, I'll give you an example. When he was younger, he'd, have, he'd be a pain in the butt trying to get to practice at 7 a.m. In, in the summer. Last year, he was the first one there uh, almost every single day. And he didn't miss once. And so that's, that, that's the type of leadership that we had. And, and really, Jay's been a tremendous leader for uh, the whole gamut. Great kid in the hallways. Everybody loves him. And, and what he's done for junior pro, him and Q as seniors, you know, lays a legacy is to, to be followed. Now, I know that we're less than a week removed away from the season at this point, but the ride is not over yet. You mentioned it to me last year that we're just getting started. And I know this is a setback, but... How do you make sure this ride gets back on the tracks uh, but, for next year? That's a, that's a great question, and I and I can't wait to see the answer. Uh, the answer is going to come in, you know, what what are our guys going to do about it? You know, the the pain that we felt in the locker room at the end of the year is it going to be translated and, and transformed into sweat and effort and making sure that the team stays together. I mean, that's the kind of stuff you just don't know. But I'm really excited to find out. I got a lot of faith. Uh, in these guys, because one thing's for sure, the record wasn't where we wanted it. You know, I'm not going to make any bones about that. But uh, the effort w was tremendous. I thought uh, had a lot of fun coaching these guys this year just because they, they put the hard hat on, came to work, and they were fun to be around. I'll ask you again like I did last year, your final thoughts on the season this year? Haven't really come through them entirely. It takes, it's, it's almost like a grieving process sometimes, you know, you guys got to, so it's, it's going to take a few days to kind of mull around, but the, the bottom line is it, it's disheartening in the fact that they gave effort, we gave effort, we thought we were somehow by hook or crook 
going to find our way into the playoffs. And I really thought once that happens, there could be some magical times. And, you know, that, that was uh, not to be. So I would just say unfinished business. You know, I mean, next year, if, if they feel that way, it is going to be one heck of a ride. And that's that's the one thing that keeps me uh, extremely excited about, about the uh, prospects. Coach, another year in this program, I feel like I count my blessings every time I get to talk with you and talk with your players and cover this team. So uh, thank you once again for another great season. I know it wasn't the result you wanted, but keep on rising. Uh, we'll do, Rich. And I just want to write back at you. I feel blessed to have you guys here covering these kids, giving them the professional uh, type of coverage and just attention. And I think you guys do it like pros, and, and I can't tell you how much I really appreciate that. And I hope for next year uh, we'll, we'll give you some really fun things to uh, be broadcasting because I really think uh, that team can do it. Raider Latrope head coach, Brad Wetzel, thank you. Thanks, Rich. So thank you for joining us for the game tonight. We want to thank all of our sponsors. Uh, Mike and I want to thank Tristan Borland and also Richard Hilwig for doing a, a great job uh, bringing you this game tonight. And of course, as we said, all of our sponsors who make this all possible.